Hey friends, this is the third video of our webinar Introduction to Pressure Vessels and ASME Codes. And here we are going to review various codes for pressure vessel design and construction. So worldwide, different industrial nations, institutions and organizations have developed standards and codes of the pressure vessel for design fabrication and inspection activities. These codes and standards help the design engineer to size the vessel properly for its safe operation. The advantages of design code is to prove one design based experience, inbuilt factor of safety and amendments of codes are being done at regular interval based on the feedback data, design improvements and technological upgradations in the material and fabrication processes. So let's see uh, what are the different codes published by various countries. So USA, the famous ASME boiler and pressure vessel codes. UK PD5500 by British Standard Institute. Similarly, uh, Germany Edimark Blatter, uh, India IS2825 by Bureau of Indian Standards. So you can see various countries have developed their own codes and standards for pressure vessel design. Now out of this uh, ASME codes are most popularly used in the pressure vessel design. So before seeing the ASME codes organization and the structure Let's review a simple presentation given by ASME which is available on ASME website which describes how ASME codes have evolved and the benefits of using ASME codes. So ASME American Society of Mechanical Engineers they are serving various sectors like technical events and contents, public affairs and outreach, group pathways and supports, student and early career development, standards and certification. This organization started in 8080 by a small group of leading industrialists. They have over 1,40,000 members in the society and is one of the largest technical publishing operations. So what is a standard? Standard is a set of technical definitions, instructions, rules, guidelines or characteristics set forth to provide consistent and comparable results including items manufactured uniformly providing for interchangeability. Then test and analysis conducted reliably, minimizing the uncertainty of results and facilitates designated and constructed for safe operation. So why do we have standards? For safety, for uniformity and consistency, for efficiency and for commerce and trade. Now we can understand that codes and standards have inbuilt safety and once we follow the codes and standard it allows uniformity and consistency because there are set of rules which need to be followed whoever does the design. Efficiency that means whenever we are designing some new vessel we don't need to find the methods again. The methods are already established and listed in the course. We simply have to follow those. So it improves the it improves the efficiency by minimizing the time required to complete the design and fabrication and inspection activities. Commerce and trade. If one buyer is interested in buying a pressure vessel, he will simply put his requirements as compliance to ASME codes and it generates the uniformity 
and he can compare the uh, the price bids one to one so it this way it helps in commerce and trade there was a uh, famous story and uh, investigation about ship sultana which was a major accident because of a boiler explosion you can search on the internet about details of this ship and how the accident had happened another accident was happened at grover shoe factory so these two are the major disasters in the history of boilers and pressure vessels so after this grover shoe factory there was a board of boiler rules established by five persons and in line to this asme formed boiler code committee in 1911 and accordingly they published the asme boilers and pressure vessel codes so this is a history of the development of asme in 1880 the asme was founded 84 first standard and code for construction of trials of steam boilers was published and coming to 1940 the first edition of pressure vessels and boiler codes was published since 1914 till today we are at edition 2019 the code and standards have evolved and as we have seen earlier the codes are getting upgraded regularly based on the industrial developments so now today we are having the latest edition as 2019 so asme develops these standards uh, and these are called standard development organizations as sdos the standards can be voluntary de facto consortia regulatory or others a voluntary voluntary standard is one which is accepted by willingness or participation then de facto standards are the default standards without any written rules uh, if we take example Uh, our qwerty keyboard is one of the de facto standard nowhere it is written that it should be q w e r t in the first line but that is how the keyboards are manufactured industry wide so these are called de facto standard and consortia consortia means a group of different organizations will come together and accept one standard that is called consortia standards then regulatory standard the government will impose certain rules those are called regulatory standards so for asme they are defining standards as living document because they are consistently being developed and revised for pressure vessel technology they are issuing boilers pressure vessels piping system and piping component related standards there are many other industries for which these standards are developed by asme so how does the asme standard affect us as an engineer so it helps us in material selection design requirements fabrication requirements examination and testing requirements and quality assurance requirements so all these requirements are listed in asme codes as a rules to be followed so for material selection the standards provide a list of allowable materials with maximum allowable stresses which we can select the design requirements it provides the minimum criteria for design thickness and the calculations involved in those however there is one underlying concept that 
ASME codes does not replace the engineering judgment. That means for all the rules which are given, it may not cover all the aspects of design. Those things which are not covered need to be taken care by expert engineering judgment and how to take engineering judgment that are also given in ASME course. Then it also gives the fabrication requirements like cutting, grinding, bolt spacing, attachment welding and bolting practices. The examination and testing requirement like radiography, ultrasonic, visual, leak testing, hydro test and pneumatic test. And it also puts some quality assurance requirements to ensure that all the requirements which are listed are properly complied for the pressure vessel. So coming back, ASME code organization, uh, the boiler and pressure vessel code is made of 12 different sections. Section 1 contains the rules for construction of power boilers. Section 2 includes the materials. In section 2 there are 4 parts A, B, C and D. Part A covers the ferrous material specifications. Part B covers non-ferrous material specifications. Part C covers the specifications for welding rods, electrodes and filler metals for ferrous as well as non-ferrous. And part D the properties for all the materials listed in part A, B and C. Section 3 covers the nuclear power plant components requirement. Section 4 rules for construction of heating boilers. Section 5 ND examinations. 